Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Uh, today I wanted to do some fall decor in neutral colors and I had all this stuff in my stash and I know that most of you can can um, get these leaves uh, just about anywhere but they're just so bright colored and I just feel like they're um, they just don't go with my style at all. So what I did was I took one of those and I uh, took it outside and sprayed it in a light brown. And now I am taking some white and just dry brushing it on both sides of the leaves. Now, um, I'm not gonna do all these. I'm just gonna do enough uh, to do the projects that I'm working on today. But um, when you're spray painting these, um, you have to, kind of turn them in different directions so that you can get everything covered. And there'll be some that won't cover completely that you missed, and like this one that I'm doing here. Uh, but uh, as long as most of it's covered, it's still going to have that neutral look. So uh, it, to me, that kind of looks like all these leaves have turned except some not quite, and that's, uh, to me, that just makes it look more natural. But as you can see, that looks much better than those orange and red and yellow leaves that we started with. Some of you may prefer that, but it's just not my thing, really. But florals and greenery is, to me, it's just so expensive that uh, Any time that I can reuse some, then I, I'm all for it. And I think these were given to me by a friend of ours who has a business uh, where they go and decorate for different seasons. And then when it's time to take it all down, rather than throw it away, a lot of times they'll just bring it to me. And um, and it's usually good greenery so or good floral. But... Um, this is good quality it's just that again i just don't care for those bright colors but again it's a very easy fix and you wouldn't even really have to go over it with this white the way i am uh, because they look kind of like just dead leaves if if you don't do that so i just like the look of that uh, white dry brushed over it I also have several pumpkins that were also either given to me or um, I purchased them in a, an estate sale. So a lot of times I'll go to estate sales on the day when they mark everything down and I can usually get the, um, especially the holiday decor, I can get it, um, or seasonal decor, I can get it at a very good price. Uh, and I, I do like the color of this pumpkin, but again, I'm working with all neutrals, and I'm going to let some of that dark show through, but uh, I did want to lighten this up. And I have several pumpkins that I'm going to be doing this to. I'm just going to do a very haphazard coat and not worry about getting it fully covered on all of these. And I'm good with all of these colors kind of showing through a little bit. I think it just adds a little extra touch uh, as long as my main color is the white. And most of these pumpkins are better quality, but even if you find some that are cheap, uh, you can still give them a much better look by painting them a lot of times. So you really don't have to spend much on items like these when you can just make them over. And when all of these are dry, then I'm gonna go over each of them with uh, a Dixie Belle product called Van Dyke Brown Glaze. And that will just tone this way down. It'll still be, um, have a white look to it, but it will warm it up a lot. And I just take a little cloth and dip it in the in the uh, glaze and then just wipe it off until I remove anything that is wet and uh, that will make, make this look a lot more realistic also. 
and I do that with all of these and then um, on just a couple of them I dry br brushed a little white back over the top of them just to uh, add some more dimension back inside them where I lost uh, some of it in this glazing but I really like how these turned out um, and I will take some um, pine cone, some of the color pine cone from Dixie Belle and dry brush it over all of these stems. Again, I don't care if, if some of that original co color shows through. Um, I just want to um, add that in to uh, kind of warm up the stems and again, um, hide some of the brighter color or the darker, deeper colors. But I really like the look that that gave these. Uh, I left all the original stems on. Again, I just uh, added some more dimension in the color. Now the first item that I'm gonna actually make over is this window and I'm not gonna do much to it. I just don't like the color that this came in. It kind of makes it look cheap. This is one of the items that I ordered from um, Galton Wholesale. And um, so all I did to that is just paint it in the color buttercream and then take my orbital sander and just lightly do some distressing on it. Now I'm gonna take this wreath that I've had for a long time I just never really liked the look of it. And I wanted to add a little cotton in with this, um, in with this vignette. So um, I thought if I leave some of this cotton on, I don't want it to be primarily cotton, but if I leave some of it on and then cut all the long stems off, uh, then I can kind of glue those back in and create some fullness. That's one of the things that this is missing. Uh, so again, I just cut all those long ones off and then I just started adding them back in uh, to make it more full. Now I don't generally do a lot of wreaths and the reason is because generally you have to add uh, so much floral in it that um, it's really hard to profit or at least that's what I find. So um, when I can take a wreath that is already done and I can just um, add to it, this one is actually going to be um, made over a little more than I would generally do, uh, but I'm still keeping it very simple and I'm using items that I had uh, in my stash along with just a little bit of new greenery. And this is the type of wreath that is similar to a grapevine wreath, so it's very easy to add in. So what I do is just uh, put some hot glue uh, in some of the little cracks where I can stick another stem back inside, and, um, and it just makes it really easy to, um, to add to. I say that as I'm struggling to get one in here. But one thing that is very helpful when you're when you're making a wreath, uh, a lot of people are intimidated, uh, but it's super, super simple as long as you uh, follow one rule, I think, and that's keeping all your floral going in the same direction. A lot of people think you have to take it in different directions to get fullness, but uh, that only makes it look unnatural, I think, and uh, this way it's kind of hard to mess up. You just keep adding until you fill in all the areas that you feel like are lacking. And as you can see, this has the same amount of cotton on it that it did have, but it looks much more full now. And I'm not stopping at this. I'm actually going to add some more in. And I wanted to add some of those beautiful leaves that uh, we painted. So uh, you'll see on this how much, uh, how pretty that looks. So I just cut some of those leaves off and just started sticking them in some of these uh, open spaces. 
Now with this, I don't have any particular direction that I need to put my floral in, so it's okay to just stick this in the spaces uh, because I'm not gonna be sliding that uh, the stem back in as much. I can just kind of use it to fill in the spaces. But I absolutely love how these leaves came out and you would never think that these are those same orange and red and yellow leaves that we started with. So I just keep adding these in until I feel like it's full and you can stop at this and I think it's really pretty just like this but i'm also going to add some lamb's ear in because i think just a touch of the lamb's ear will contrast this enough and freshen it up but still keep that fall look this would also be pretty with some pine cones added in so the next time you get either get some leaves given to you uh, that are cheap and brightly colored or if you buy them at the Dollar Tree or happen on them at a thrift store uh, then just think about how you can change them to suit your decor. So here I am adding just some little pieces of that uh, lamb's ear and um, at this point because I already have the leaves just kind of filling in, I can also fill this in without having to worry so much about the direction of the leaves. But I just love how this lamp's ear complements these neutral colors. I think it's just such a pretty fresh fall look. And this is exactly the colors that I would use to decorate with at home. So once I get this finished, then I'm just going to hang it on that window and that will give it a fresh new look and uh, make a real pretty fall wall hanging. And then the next item that I'm going to make over is going to be kind of a simple makeover. It is uh, some sort of a basket. Uh, it actually has metal on the outside of it and uh, it's already been painted and distressed but it's always had this burgundy color on the inside so um, i just really didn't ever know what to do with that so i thought this would be a good opportunity since i did the wreath in the cotton uh, it would be a good opportunity to use uh, some more of this transfer called cotton and eucalyptus from dixie bell so I took a couple of pieces and I put one on the front and one on the back and then I'm gonna paint the inside of that and I know it's like a crushed velvet type stuff inside uh, but I, I just need it to match and I think it's gonna paint fine and it'll take a little bit to dry but it will paint fine and I'm gonna um, do the inside of this in the color coffee bean which is real close to the brown in this cotton so i think that that will be a good accent color for the inside and if you'll remember i did a video with this cotton and eucalyptus and um and so i have a vignette that i can kind of work this into but once I got this transferred on both sides, then I just finished it off with a clear coat. And um, after I painted the inside of it in the color coffee bean. Now I'm excited about this next item and uh, I found it actually on Pinterest. And this is my inspiration pic picture. So I love these pumpkins, but I'm gonna change mine up a little bit. Now I've already started with three fencing boards or actually just one fencing board cut into pieces. But uh, somehow I missed the video where I, I just drew a pumpkin out. So I took that center board and took my jigsaw and just cut kind of a wave on the top of it. And then the side boards, um, as you can see, I just kind of drew um, out the pumpkin edge. So uh, I kept the bottom flat because it's gonna be sitting up. So um, as you can see, um, 
a pumpkin shape is very, very easy to draw, especially when you're drawing it in sections like this. Just line your boards up so that you make sure that your cuts are, are right, and just take a pencil and draw out the way you want your pumpkin to be shaped. Now, the pumpkins in my inspiration pieces are shorter and I wanted a little bit more height on mine so I drew mine just a little bit larger and or a little bit taller and this one I think is the small one of the set of two that I made but what I also did on the video that I lost uh, was um, just drill a couple of holes in each board and I made sure that I laid them side by side so that my my um, holes lined up and what they did was use twine which you could definitely do um, I'm using rusty wire and I know if you guys are like me it's no fun to work with thick rusty wire which is what this is I wish I had had a little bit smaller um, wire because it would have been a little easier but what I did was uh, I, I put a piece about eight inches and fed it through the back of both of those and then I just twisted them together. And then because I want my wire to be uh, part of the uh, dimension of the pumpkin, I'm just taking a little wooden dowel and wrapping it around uh, so that I have just kind of some kind of curly cues at the ends of my wire. Now, if you wanted to, you could take your wire, if you don't like this look, uh, you could take your wire and feed it through the front so that the back, you could just twist that and cut it off. Uh, but again, I just wanted to add a little something to mine, so that's why I'm using this wire. So I did this on both sides and I made sure uh, to have enough play in it so that my pumpkin could hinge somewhat. Uh, but it's really not hard to make sure of that because this wire is kind of hard to pull all the slack out of it. So you're gonna end up with just a little bit of slack anyway and then your pumpkin will uh, hinge the way it needs to. I love to find something on Pinterest and uh, just kind of make it my own. And I know a lot of you do that as well. Um, I don't want to copy exactly. Sometimes I love what they've done so much that I do copy it exactly, but I always want to try to give them credit. Uh, but this um, was just something that I thought was really neat. And I knew that I could put my own twist on it. Now, um, if you're gonna work with rusty wire, and uh, I'm not really practicing what I preach, um, but if you're gonna work with rusty wire, you really need to be very careful because uh, if you get cut and it's very easy to do, then this is rusty wire, so that's not a good thing. So um, I'm trying to be careful, but uh, I am a little, uh, a little careless at times. And if you're not comfortable working with a rusty wire, then just use uh, some, um, some jute twine or something like that. Or you could use just regular wire that isn't rusted and then you could paint it to look rusty. Now, I also didn't mention that I dry brush some better cream on the front of these because um, these are in this neutral vignette and so these would be very pretty done in orange or um, even um, some sort of blue but um, but I just wanted these particular ones to be in the buttercream and then another thing that I didn't show was I took some of my antiquing ink there that you see on the side and just kind of uh, distressed it around the edges to uh, darken those edges up and give it more of a distressed look and give it more dimension. 
Now, if you've never crafted with these fencing boards, they are absolutely wonderful to craft with because they cut very easily, they sand very easily, they're lightweight, and uh, they don't cost very much. So I always try to keep some of these on hand. Now, what is great about these is because they hinge, they'll set up so you can hinge them forward or backward, either one that you want, and I'll show you both of those. Um, but, uh, but these just, I, I really love the look of these. Now, my husband thought that the wire should be left just rusty, and I thought about it uh, and almost did that, but um, I didn't want that much of a contrast. So what I did was I took some of the buttercream paint and I just kind of dabbed it over it so that maybe maybe about two-thirds of the uh, surface of it was, um, was painted and the other third you could kind of see uh, like it was distressed and, and this rusty wire was showing through. And what I'm fighting with here is just cutting some of those ends off that I couldn't get to curl so that it would have a prettier look. So there it is hinged forward. Uh, I think in the inspiration piece, it was hinged the other way. So now I need a stem on this. So um, their stem, I'm not sure what they made it with but um, it was more of a dressy look than I wanted. I wanted these to be very rustic. So what I ended up doing is I found some old spindles that I have that uh, my husband cut for me to add on these. So these, um, I'll have to ask a little more for these than I do some of my other wooden pumpkins, not because the... Um, boards are expensive or anything else that I have in them except for that spindle. Uh, as you guys know, it's not the easiest to come across old spindles and when you do, you're kind of picky about what you use them on and um, this one is uh, definitely worth putting them on but I'll have to price it accordingly. And that's if this set doesn't end up at my house because it, it very well may. Now here is the spindles that what he did was just cut a chunk out of that front so that when I put that on the back, it just kind of sets there on the top and I can put some wood glue on it uh, on the top and the back and then put a couple of uh, brad nails through the back. But I love the way these particular spindles were shaped and also love that deep rich color that will contrast these pumpkins well. So I just put some glue on these. As you can see, it makes a very good way to add these when he cut that slice out of it with the chop saw. And I can just glue that on the top and take my brad nailer and just put a couple of short nails in there and uh, you could even use staples in this case. But once I got these added on and they were secure, then I just tied some raffia grass around the top, added some fall greenery, uh, along with some of those leaves that we painted earlier, and these were finished. Again, I did these in a couple of different sizes. They did a set of three. I wanted a set of two, and I just did these in a couple of different sizes, and I just love how they turned out. And here they are hinged back the other way. Again, these colors are definitely my style and um, something that I would definitely decorate with uh, at my house. I'm not sure what you would use that little container for, but I'm going to find a use for it. Don't forget, if you want to make some Christmas hang tags for my tree, uh, I will link my uh, address in the description so that you can mail those to me and I will use them to decorate a tree at the shop. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening and God bless you and your family.